We're going to be going over a big old renovation punch list. Bob and Erica, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I'm your host, James Wise. And folks, uh, this is a show where we work together, right? You and I, we work together to uh, try to fulfill your real estate wants and needs, right? You send my team um, information about yourselves, how much money you have, what you're looking to do, what you want to invest in, how you want to finance it, goals, risk tolerance, et cetera. And uh, we help you analyze properties. We find you properties, the whole shebang. After that, we can give you top to bottom assistance, right? We have insurance. We have title. We have property management. We have renovations. We have brokerage services. We got it all. And specifically speaking, uh, today's show, we're going to be talking about renovation services because Bob and Erica been working with you folks for uh, quite some time now and uh, going back and forth looking to do some deals you guys got a big old portfolio multiple states and uh, you're looking to get into Cleveland uh, do some stuff here in Cleveland some uh, you know expand that portfolio and you guys are interested in this one one eight two zero zero Edinburgh Avenue, Maple Heights, 44137. Just listed a few days ago. 12 days on the market. Priced at 39900 Three beds, two baths, and after it's renovated, this bad boy will rent for $1,000 a month. So the reasons you guys uh, felt that we should do some due diligence, look into this bad boy, makes sense to me. Uh, it's got to need a lot of repairs, though, right? You guys... Um, I actually already sent me the POS, right? For everybody out there who's watching the show and you're like, what the hell does POS mean? I never heard that phrase before. That's something that's going to be very important in the Cleveland market. Many suburbs, uh, including Maple Heights, which is where this house is located, have point of sale violation requirements. I don't want to get into the weeds on what that means right now since I've already made a video about it. So in the show notes below, if you got no clue what we're talking about, pause this video, check that video out. It's a few minutes long and then come back to us so you know what we're talking about. So you guys sent me a big old POS and um, also in addition, right, you know, you could just tell that the house is just, you know, it's going to need a lot of work, right? You're going through this thing. We got this old kitchen, you know, stuff on the floors that's coming up. These tiles, like, dude, those are freaking old and gross. Just the whole house is just old and gross, right? This window, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, what's going on here, right? Holes in the walls. Just, you know, if it is broken, uh, you know, if it can be broken, it is broken. Uh, real quick here. This is uh, important, right? You see how uh, this has got blue painter's tape on it? That means we're buying a home where it's already been winterized. The water's already off. That is uh, very key. That's going to come into play. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, though. That's going to be very important. So if you're looking through pictures online and you see blue painter's tape on a, a toilet or in a sink or anything like that, that means there ain't no water onto the property. And like, like I said, man, that's going to come into play here. It's going to be very important for us. All right. So, you know, from the pictures, the home, it's totally jacked up, right? So we're going to have to do some renovations. Now, I said it's going to rent for $1,000. Maple Heights, this is a nice suburb, guys. We do a lot of business in Maple Heights. You're going to get some solid tenants in Maple Heights. So after we finish off this renovation of this property, if you guys are to move forward, uh, what's, what's it going to look like? What type of returns are we going to get? Because you're not going to get that $1,000. You're not going to get to just keep $12,000 a year, of course. You know there's going to be costs, right? And you too, you're seasoned, so you know. $1,000 comes in. We're going to account hundred and fifty dollars for our repairs maintenance vacancy and non-payment capital expenditures we know that you know 
Those are variable expenses, but we know they're eventually going to come. We're eventually going to need to do roofs again because you got to do roofs every 30 years, furnaces every 30 years, hot water tanks every 15 years. Tenants don't pay all the time. It's just part of the game, right? Taxes, 271. Insurance, 60. If you guys need a quote for property insurance, click the notes below. My team, licensed coast to coast, we can lower your property insurance if you're a landlord. I can almost guarantee it. Water sewer, you got to pay that 75. We got a single family home here, so we're going to push the the lawn care off on the tenants. They'll handle that. Property management 100. So, thousands is going to come in. I anticipate you guys are going to spend an average of 656. So, your net operating income will be 344 on average every month. So, every single year on average, you should make around 4,000 bucks. Not every year to the dot. Some years will be better than others. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. But, right, we're looking to make approximately four G's a year. Now, here is the issue with the deal. Okay, herein lies the problem. Now, it's listed uh, by this company, Aspire Community Realty. And what they're doing is they're working. Uh, w with foreclosure sales, and that's going to be key to what we have here because the first thing we got to address, right, is this big old POS, okay? It's just pages upon pages of just violations, right? Just tons of violations, okay? So you guys are like, yo, James, kind of give us some numbers on these violations. Now, as per the pictures, you, are, you already see the house is just messed up, right? And a lot of these violations that are, are going to be on here, like a lot of these things, like second floor bedrooms, the light fixtures, inoperable, damaged walls, right? We saw holes in the walls, shit like that, right? There's like a lot of stuff on here that's just going to fall under obvious cosmetic fixes, right? Because you can't rent the house that I just showed you in the pictures, right? You can't rent that to tenants for a thousand bucks a month. So... Just based upon just regular cosmetic stuff that we got to do. Because, dude, we got to go in there. New kitchen. New bathroom. All the floors. We need to refinish those. Sand those suckers down. Stain them. Glaze them. We got to do all the painting. Fix all the holes. Make sure all the windows work. Open. Close. Not sticking a fucking stick in there to keep the window open. You know, make sure we have all the smoke detectors. Carbon monoxide detectors. All that jazz. Just the normal stuff. We would have to do to get this ready to rent to tenants, whether or not they were violations by the city. We need to spend $25,000 approximately to get the home up to snuff, right? So the fact that a lot of these violations exist, you know, just keep that out of your mind. Just like if there were no violations, it's twenty five to get it just like market acceptable to put people into it. And that's going to clear off a large majority of your violations. But... There are some things in the POS that are going to come on top of that. So things that we would not necessarily have to do to get a tenant in there for $1,000 a month because they've been cited by the city, uh, we're going to need to do those, okay? And uh, what we got here is there the several there's several citations on here about the driveway and the apron. All right, so that's on there. So with all the concrete work, so on page one of your POS, right? Let's see, it's like right, right here, right? This one right here, and then if you cruise on down to page two, it it's there again, right? So stuff on this particular page. Between both driveway citations, I anticipate about 10 G's worth of work. A little bit above the driveway thing on the hot water tank. Uh, let's see if you guys can see that. Hot water tank right here. Hot water heater. This, you got to fix your hot water tank. That's on there. That's another G. You got some stuff. They want you to fix up the yard. So let's just go ahead and calculate another G. And then they want us to take care of the gutters, the downspouts, steps and porches. Another G for that. We got some tuck pointing. Another G. So when the whole thing is all said and done to get us past all the cosmetic renovations of this particular property and clear off that POS. I anticipate on top of those cosmetic rentals of approximately 25, another 14, right? So to get this thing totally rocking and rolling, man, we're going to need to spend $39,000. So because of that, I think the deal is probably a long shot, right? It's listed at 39,900, right? And we need to spend 39,000 to get it up to snuff. Now, 
you can't pay any more than $20,000 for this property. If you pay $20,000 for this property, that's the most you can pay for this property to make it make sense because you'll be all in for $59,000 and we'll probably get it to appraise for between sixty-five dollars and $70,000. If it appraises, just let's use very conservative numbers. If it appraises at $65,000, you bought it at 20, you put 39 into it, you're all in for 59,000, the bank will loan you 48,750 back, you're gonna end up with only 10,250 in the deal, and that'd be a 24% cash on cash return. So that's a pretty solid deal. It's a lot of work to get to it, but you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But the reason I say that this is such a long shot is it's gonna be probably impossible uh, to pick this up right now at least at 20,000. I don't necessarily think there's gonna be a lot of people out there willing to pay 39,900, but uh, what this is, this is a foreclosure sale, right? And it's kind of goofy how these work. I don't know if you guys are used to dealing with like banks with foreclosure sales. They're, you know, you're not dealing with just like an actual owner. So it's not like you can just give them an attractive cash offer and then someone's there ready to make the decision or not make the decision. Like as a matter of fact, what happens with deals like this is you got to submit all the information through their like special websites for this one in particular is this website right here. It's called propoffers.com. You got to pay an additional fee, right? You got to pay a fee. It's like 175 bucks to actually submit an offer through this website. We got to go in and register and all that jazz. You got to pay the fee. And then, you know, it's going to take probably like weeks. It could take weeks. I've seen these things take two, three weeks before you actually get some type of reply. And the way that they typically do these is they're only willing to accept offers within a certain percentage of that list price, right? Whether or not that's feasible uh, doesn't matter. They just, you know, they usually have asset managers that, you know, go by specific formulas, right? And then what they do is on a predetermined time basis, it's usually like every two or three weeks, they drop the price. It's typically $5,000. Now, I'm not saying that the asset manager and the bank and the company is going to do it exactly like that. I mean, every single bank can, you know, there's no law a rule of how the bank needs to do this, but just someone who's uh, you know bought and sold many properties using similar uh, sources uh, for the inventory, who's done this a bunch of times, I can tell you that's like you know more often than not, that not that's how it works, right? So you guys, you know, you want to buy it for half of what it's listed. I don't see them entertaining that offer right now. Now, maybe two weeks from now, they drop it to 35, and then another two weeks, they drop it to 30. Then they drop it to 25, and then, it, you know, maybe then we can get the bid accepted, or maybe when it goes down to 20, stuff like that. That's typically how it works. I mean, it, there's really no rhyme or reason to how it's done, and it's very bureaucratic. To just give you guys like an example, uh, a few years back, I, I was working on a deal, and the property was priced at like X. I don't remember the exact numbers, but long story short, we submitted an offer, right? Just let's just for easy math, because I don't remember the exact numbers here. But for easy math, let's say it's like twenty-five thousand dollars. So we submitted an offer that was probably like twenty maybe like $21,000, okay? And of that $21,000, they declined it, but then like two days later, they dropped the price down to nineteen nine, right? So we sent them a, an offer that was like a thousand bucks higher, uh, but because it didn't meet their criteria of, uh, you know, the offer price being a certain percentage of the list price, you know, the asset manager had to decline that offer even though like the predetermined schedule was going to then a couple days later uh, lower the price to a point that's actually lower than what our original offer is. So there's not exactly a lot of rhyme or reason to it. So that is uh, one thing we're going to run into, which makes me feel like the deal is super duper uh, low chance of working out for us all here. And then one more thing that's important with the fact that this is a foreclosure we want to go back to this toilet, right? Now, when you're doing these deals and you guys are trying to do your due diligence, right? You guys are trying to figure out exactly what's going on with your houses. You want to get third-party home inspectors to come in and take a look at stuff, right? Well, right here, like I said, this means the water is off, folks. And also the electricity is going to be off too, right? All utilities are off. When you're dealing with companies like this, banks like this, asset managers, dude, you're going to be like, hey, turn on the utilities. I want to do inspection. They're going to be like, no, no, 
That's just not how it works, right? So you're not going to be able to do your due diligence, right? So we're not going to be able to go in there and actually figure out if your furnace works because we can't turn your gas on. So the quote I've given you, 25 Gs, that's for all the cosmetics, and then another 14 doesn't include your furnace. Maybe that furnace is trash. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But if the furnace is, that's another 3 Gs. You're going to have to go in with that being unknown. As far as, like, other plumbing systems, we know we got to redo that hot water tank, but perhaps there's uh, hairline cracks in all the, the plumbing pipes that we don't know about. As soon as we turn the water on, boom, maybe they're going to burst. That's not something you're going to have the opportunity to have an inspector check out for you because the water, it ain't coming on, right? Uh, and then as far as all the electrical goes, you know, there could be electrical wiring issues you're not necessarily going to know about. Um, so those are other unknowns. And when you're dealing with a, a foreclosure company, bank-owned properties, they don't typically care uh, about your due diligence or what you're trying to do. I just explained to you their bidding process. So again, you're not, you don't get to convey a person with interest in the deal. You don't get to like pitch them on what you're trying to do, right? It's just specifically by the book. So those are all factors you guys need to think about. Uh, so for all those reasons, I am going to guesstimate there's a very low probability that we get this deal done. But if you guys would like us to submit an offer for you, we can. But again, I think that's going to be a very low probability. I wouldn't spend too much time trying to make a deal happen here. Uh, so what I think would probably be the smartest move would be to just move on and look at other properties. At least move on for now. Maybe in six weeks we reevaluate, check out if this is still on the market at a much lower price. Because just based upon the numbers, it don't make no damn sense for somebody to pick this up at 40 and then spend 40 because the fucker is only going to be worth 65 70 maximum. So it, it just doesn't make any feasible sense uh, for anybody to spend that money. So I'm assuming it's going to be on the market, uh, you know, six weeks to two months from now. So that's all I've got for everybody today. As always, folks, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. 
Just enter the details of your property and RedTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.